are still here on the touchline on Y254 where we are still discussing murders football and now we jump gears and talk about everything that is happening in the Africa Cup of Nations. Remember the showpiece will be kicking off in Egypt next Friday that is the 19th of July all the way to the 21st of Ju Ju June to July. Sorry for that confusion there on the Africa Cup of Nations. I'm happy because KBC Channel 1 will be the only free-to-air broadcaster of the Africa Cup of Nations. So if you want all the 52 matches, KBC Channel 1 is where you'll be finding those matches. And then Y254 will be giving you all the highlights and all the matches in repeat as they happen. <coughs> so if you watch the live match on KBC Channel 1, be sure the repeat of that match will be on Y254 and all the highlights of the 52 matches of the Africa Cup of Nations will be here. Now, now we are going to talk about the Africa Cup of Nations and Kenya for the very first time in 15 years since 2004 is in the Africa Cup of Nations. Joining us here to talk about this conversation right now is Ronald Okot, is the founder and CEO of Ronald Okot Sport Management. He is here to talk to us about the AFCON and our preparedness to play in this showbiz. Zach Soguda is still here with us in his, with this book, Away from Victory, and we are still we are done with the book itself, but we are still talking about the Africa Cup of Nations, and those are some of the moments he has captured in this book. And we have got Nairobi City Stars player, also currently Idi Shikanda, here with us to talk about the Africa Cup of Nations. Let's go ahead and talk about our preparedness for the match. Ronald, you are playing DR Congo this evening at 7 p.m. in Madrid. We played Madagascar 1-1-0. Now it's against DR Congo, a team that is in the Africa Cup of Nations. Do you think we are ready for this showpiece, the way we are going? Well, I think Zach would think <laughs> Zach would say that you're not ready. <laughs> but to me, yeah. I think uh, the team is more than ready because mm -hmm. he, I, I watched the game against uh, some highlights, the game, the game against Madagascar, and I think uh, the boys really played well. Mm -hmm. Even though to me, probably we survived the scare because Madagascar they lo they lost a penalty. Yes. But to me, it's been some good prepar preparations that the federation has accorded the boys. Mm -hmm. And going into this match against uh, uh, that, that, that are going to play t t t tonight, I think to me we stand a better chance of maybe trying to now try to rub our shoulders with the big boys in the next maybe week or so. So this will be another big test for the boys yeah. and for the coach to know his first 11. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about you, Zach? We have been camping in France. 18 days that we are supposed to be in France to prepare for this game. This is our second friendly tonight. How do you think it will pan out? Um, uh, first of all, I don't think the friendly will be shown live for those who guys who asked where they might want to watch the friendly. Mm -hmm. It won't be live because you see at this young child the coach wants to hide their game. Yes. And um, as Ronald said, uh, Minye has already known what team he will parade against Algeria. Right now what he's trying to do is to get players yeah. who can give him the edge should plan A fail. Yes. Yeah, so basically the game against the Congo but the results is about having players who can be ready physically and mentally for the Algeria game. Yeah. Yeah. Many injuries in our squad, ED. We've got yeah. Brian Mandela leaving yeah. through injury. Chris Mbamba has also left through injury. And two players were dropped, and that is Anthony Akumu and Clifton Miheso. Yeah. The remaining 23 players more so in defense. Are we good enough? Yeah, I think we are good. Uh, look at Philomeno Tieno. He has been outstanding in the uh, uh, in the league matches, uh, yeah. that is for Gurmaya side. Yeah. Look at uh, jo Joshua Onyango, he has been outstanding even in the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, look at Musa Mohamed, uh, Abu Domar. Yes. I think these are the guys who have been featured in all the uh, quali qualifiers to the AFCON. So, the back line is for Coach Sebastian Minya mm -hmm. to just decide yes. who will start and who will back up the others. Do you think it's a big loss not having Brian Mandela in that team? Yeah, of course it's a big loss for a coach like Sebastian Mine, timing that he had prepared his mind to field uh, Brian Mandela in his first 11. Mm -hmm. uh, timing that uh, for the Madagascar uh, friendly, we are, we are not supposed to be told that this is the starting lineup, but we are 
just from the look of the, the, the things that you you are you, you are there to see Brian Mandela was going to start the match, him to partnership uh, with uh, Musa Mohamed. Yes. So I think it it's a it's a difficult situation for Sebastian Mina to pick whoever will uh, replace uh, Brian Mandela in the back line. What's a big one for us there? Which player do you think deserved to be in this team but was not included in the team? Uh, you can't say a player deserves to be in the team. That's mm. something that the coach decides. You yes. see, as fans, you mm -hmm. will always have players yes. to be in the team. Mm -hmm. But if Minye fails the players he has in the team, mm -hmm. will do what he wants to do. You see, what people don't understand is club football and national team football is a totally uh, different <laughs> ball game. Mm -hmm. If a coach feels like yeah. this guy won't get into my system, yes. then there's no reason why you people should shout that yeah. Jesse Wetter, for example, yeah. uh, because uh, I want to touch on the Jesse Wetter bit. Yes. Uh, during the trainings that we visit every time we go, yeah. Minya will say is one guy who he knows the attacking front, they're not that well in the attacking front. So you need players in the attacking front who mm -hmm. can help track back. Yes. But for Jesse Wetter, is one guy who will just wait for those supplies and bang goals. If Jesse Wele can get a team that supplies balls, yes. then that's one person you, you won't want to miss in a team. Mm -hmm. But because Jesse Wele doesn't track back and someone like Masood will do a bit of this tidy work, yeah. that's why he normally picked Mutamba in the previous games because of the work rate. Yes. So I won't say anyone deserves to be in the team or not. If yeah. the coach feels that those are the right, rightful players, then mm -hmm. so be it. What a performance, that's what they say. Ah, yeah. good one for Raz there. That match tonight, could you, could you give it a scoreline between DRC? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. Well, I think, I, I think for tonight it's not about the results. Yeah. It's about uh, trying to, to monitor the boys and see who's fit enough, who's good enough, you know, yes. to start in the AFCON. So mm -hmm. to me, tonight it won't be so much about results. Mm -hmm. Irrespective of whether DRC wins or maybe we win or maybe we get a draw, it mm -hmm. will be all about monitoring the players. And if I can quickly add on what Zach has said, I think yeah. uh, Zach is right. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, we, 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 I'm trying, uh, I've been monitoring the coach for a while and I've, yeah. I think uh, we, we are trying to see the type of player that he likes to play up front. Uh -huh. I mean, he likes workaholics. Yes. There have been talks that why Wanga was left in the, mm -hmm. uh, was not called in the, in the, in in the, the, provisional, in the provisional squad yeah. and they picked uh, John Avire, yes. my teammate. And uh, true, I, I, I'm a witness. I yes. know how John Avira works. Yes. He's a really hard work. He can track back. He can mm -hmm. uh, hustle the defenders. He can yes. go back. He can defend. He can mm -hmm. go uh, run forward. He can mm -hmm. attack. He can hold the play. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the way Masood plays, I think Masood played the same way. Yes. You know, they, 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 they're just bullies with the, all on the ball and off the ball. Yeah. So to me, I think Coach, uh, he's been looking for a type of player who can play up front, who can bully the defenders at the, tra at the same time, who can come back and track. And look at the way we've been playing with Olunga, playing at the... At the, at the lone strike at the yes. center forward mm -hmm. we'll, we'll really need a lot of pace and power at the flanks so that at least the delivery so maybe the delivery to Olunga can be perfect and uh, you know with those one-on-one -on -one situations again yes. we can always count on Olunga well the game will be today at 7 p.m in Madrid that will be Kenya versus DR Congo but before the game we had a chance to talk to these coaches and this is what they sent to us from Paris ahead of this game. Sebastian Minya, the coach, Victor Wanyama, the captain, and Francis Kahata, our Kenyan midfielder in Paris. Any risk with uh, Musa to know. Uh, so we will play without Brian and Musa. But I told you, uh, when you have a bad luck, it's uh, every time an opportunity also to to have a new answer, it was the case for the games against Ghana without uh, my captain, you know. And at this time we found the solution. Uh, we will see tomorrow, but one time again the priority is Algeria. We need to continue to learn with this competition, but uh, we are not still in the top in Africa. We are on the way. The uh, FIFA ranking uh, and Africa ranking uh, can explain it. You know, it's sure we are maybe around uh, 25 in, uh, in Africa today. But it's not a reason to stop to dream. We want to, to continue. Since one year, the, the players gave me every time a good surprise, and we need to continue like it.
the, the morale in the camp has been fantastic. Um, um, we have a very good group. And um, come tomorrow, you know, we, we just want to compete. We, we want to give our best on the on that game, <coughs> even if it's friendly. And then uh, uh, we'll see the outcome. Um, going to Afcon, uh, we want also to to perform well. We want to give our best. Uh, we want to um, go to every game and um, try and uh, perform better. Try and uh, uh, give. Um, give um, our all to get the positive results and also I want to urge all, uh, all the Ken Kenyans uh, supporters uh, if they can they travel and uh, support the team and also in their back home just uh, uh, get behind the team and support the team. Kiangalia kuna hii tumecheza juzi, tumewin, hii as in hiyo already hiyo ni motivation poa kucheza hii game ya Kesho na DRC. Kwa hili tumecheza nao game bill tukiwashinda Maybe kuwa wana feel as in ita imea ku revenge but bado wana saopia sisa as in uh, penye tuliachia as in tulata kuendelea na hapo. So si tuko ready kwa hiyo game ya kesho. Na itakuwa bado motivation poa bado tukishinda as in itakuwa moral poa as in uh, tukingi afu kwa natilisu na wana preparation yetu imekuwa poa na hizo friendly tumeza kushinda. Na najua iti game itakuwa poa udhuwa watu hizo wa darao but uh, najua as in uh, team bado iko ready kila mtu wako ready na well. Coach Sebastian Menye there, Victor Wanyama and Francis Kahata talking about their upcoming game as they prepare ahead of the Africa Cup of Nations. Ronald, the Africa Cup of Nations is finally here and Kenya will be participating in this showpiece. Will it be a star track kind of moment getting onto the Africa Cup of Nations? Because the teams we played with in 2004, I've gone a major milestone yeah. considering where Kenya is at the moment. Teams like Tunisia, teams like Mali, teams like Burkina Faso, they have gone way far ahead more than Kenya. Will Kenya be starstruck going into this competition? <laughs> well, I don't think we'll be starstruck start, start, start yeah. <laughs> because we also have a sign our team. We also have Victor Nyama. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, we don't have many Africans playing in the EPL, and EPL yeah. is one of the best leagues. Yeah. So to me, the boys, I think they, 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 they're, they're professional. They're professional yeah. enough to know the job that, has, that is taking them there. Yeah. And even though it's, it can be said that you qualified as a fluke because of uh, Sierra yeah. Leone's woos and all yes. that. Uh -huh. But you know, in football, it doesn't matter whether you play ugly or uh -huh. you win ugly or maybe you qualify in an ugly way yeah. the, fa the matter of the fact is you've qualified at the end of the day yeah. and to me there's a there's no better chance that uh, there's there's no better time that we we stand a better chance to know to show the to show the world and to show the continent what we too can produce because for a long time, you know, when you talk when you talk to Nigerians, they say Kenyans you're only good at athletics. athletics. Yes. When you talk about it, they, they only know Kenya about athletics and maybe rugby a bit. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, this is a, this is a better time for also us to announce ourselves in the biggest stage, and that's mm -hmm. the Afcon. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, they, they, I think they're braced and ready for the for the job that is waiting for them. Zach, yes. you wrote about the federation in your book. Yeah. There's a major part in your book talking about the federation, the wrangles, and everything that they have had. Mm -hmm. But this time round, what will you give the Federation on what they have done to this team? Um, I think so many people, mostly who have not read the books, maybe because of uh, my stand on topical issues, yeah. have had this notion that maybe I'm against the Federation. Mm -hmm. When actually in this book, uh, there's no entity that I've placed uh, uh, like the Federation. Yeah. You can't wash away what Nick Mondo has done in Marta's organization. Mm -hmm. you got to give it to him. We've never had yes. such a kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like a two-week a a two camp in France, guys are all kitted, mm -hmm. their bonuses are coming on time. Yes. These are the little things that players need. The government need. is also uh, coming. The government is also chipping in. These are the little yeah. things that the players need to yeah. boost uh, their morale in the game. So mm -hmm. if that aspect is sorted yes. the way Ronald said, mm -hmm. then it's now up to them to give us the show that mm -hmm. every other person uh, requires. You remember guys asking why so and so is in the team and so and so, so is in the team. So it's up to the players to prove to the coach that you get gave me this chance, it's my time to prove this mm -hmm. and this is, the, this is the reason why so and so didn't make it here. Yeah. On the star striking thing, I don't mm -hmm. think We'll have a problem with that mm -hmm. because uh, when you look at a player like Philip Monotino, the way he said, mm -hmm. this is someone who's has been in CAF for the past two seasons yes. now. Josh, the same. Yeah. And uh, you look at players like Wanyama, mm -hmm. players like uh, I think Akinatedi. Mm -hmm. These are players who've 
competed with some of the best in Africa. Yeah. And some of these best players, uh, like when you watch the Kum, the defender, he tells you when he was in the PSL, yeah. he featured with guys like Shabalala, Pesitao. Mm -hmm. See, Pesitao is someone who's just gone from the PSL to EPL and Belgium. Yes. This is someone you'll see again, then he'll just say this is someone I've played with against mm -hmm. before. So why should I be afraid of this guy when yeah. I tackle him before? So it's just the same, same thing. I don't think we'll get a problem with that. Yeah. The, Ronald. stage yeah plus remember the game against ghana yeah i mean uh, party asked for dennis odiambo's jazz yeah is a local player yeah i mean so i don't think that would be himself <laughs> that yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah but when we talk about the federation this is the first time that we have had a federation that has come with age groups more so for the national team we have got the under 13 yeah. we've got the under 15 yeah. under 17 under 20, yeah. under 23, and the national team. Yeah. Are you seeing a good future for us? Because now after this generation of players, yeah. we have got to see another good generation coming up of players. Definitely, yes, Robert, uh, because uh, it's, a, it's a way to success because we have those structures and we've been lacking so much such structures since the, uh, uh, since the reign of... Uh, Uncle Sam yes. we've never, never had some had such such, such kinds. Mm -hmm. But uh, here comes Nick Nick Mwendwa. He has put all the structures, even though he has he hasn't worked all he hasn't exhausted all the the the, the promises he made. Yeah. But at least we are seeing the under thirteen A Light League. Uh, myself, I do witness the le uh, the the leagues those kids are playing. Yeah. So it's a good structure, and all over the world it has been happening go to Europe, go to other neighboring countries, they have all the structures. Look at, uh, I'll give you the example of uh, our neighboring country, Tanzania. Yes. The, now their the, the league is over, mm -hmm. now they are under 20s, yes. are playing their league now. Yes. Yeah, that's a very good structure because they're using their youth, under 20, league, uh, under 20 uh, boys, they're using them to feed their senior teams. Mm -hmm. So at least, Nick Mwendoa, kudos for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to add, uh, just to add on what that guy said. Uh, you see in Tanzania, yeah. uh, in this book, mm -hmm. uh, I think at um, the essence of academies. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you look at that Tanzanian team right now in mm -hmm. AFCON, mm -hmm. um, there are eight players who graduated from the Azam Academy mm -hmm. that yes. are currently in the national team. So yeah. that will tell you if mm -hmm. you're going to have a youth structure that structure. works. Yes then we won't be having problems in uh, fishing players mm -hmm. from other countries in the name of these guys are Kenya. And mm -hmm. or, I mean, that weighing issue won't be there. When you have ready-made talents yeah. yes. ready for the market, mm -hmm. then you just pick guys from the academy yeah. and just get them the league and the national team. It helps a lot yeah. in those established leagues. Well, Football Kenya Federation President Nick Mwendwa is also in Paris with the team as the team is preparing to play in Egypt. He also had an interview there. Let's hear what he had to say from France. Ole, my director will be looking for that one. We'll be playing it a little later. In Okay, let's play it. We are heading to three weeks, uh, completion of three weeks of training. Tomorrow is our second and final friendly against DRC in Madrid. We have been here so for three weeks. We promise that we will do this and we have pulled all stops to get this done. I'm very encouraged by the work we have done. The team has done a fantastic job. I have been here myself for this period of time and I, I can only say that I wish we had this in Kenya. It's different, the approach is different, the tools are different, the camp is, has exceeded my expectations by being here. And, and we have been locked away uh, one hour from Paris without distractions. Uh, I think no player has left the camp since we played Madagascar. And so I'm very encouraged by the work we have done and what we set out to do for these players and for Kenya in terms of preparation. Once we play DR Congo tomorrow, I am glad that uh, we will have done and gotten the job done to the details that we really wanted to get done. We have given the coach and the players everything they ever asked for and more. 
we have pulled all stops to make sure that that is done. And I can only say that now uh, it's upon them to get a job done. So, yeah, so, so, so I, want, I want to set a record straight. When we left Kenya, every player got $2,500. That was also unprecedented because we paid them before. And we promised Kenyans that when the coach releases his final 23 squad, we will pay the $5,000 to make it a total of $7,000. And I can tell Kenyans again that yesterday, all players and the bench were paid all monies once again in advance. So $5,000 yesterday went to the players. So we have paid $7,500 in allowances. So we do not owe anyone. In advance, before even getting the Cup of Nations, we have made the payments, we have closed. And that's why you see there is no story about money anymore. There is nothing to discuss regarding money. The preparation has been super. They have got their kit. They have got their medical equipment. They have the support staff around with them. They have a fantastic facility uh, that you can dream of. Portugal was here before they won the Euro in 2017. So can you imagine uh, our team staying in the same facility at Portugal Stadium? This is unprecedented stuff. This has never happened in Kenyan football. We have given them every little tool they have asked for. We have added the number of support staff they wanted. And we even brought a chef for them to make sure that they have a Kenyan touch in the food that they asked for. We cannot be 100%, uh, but this that we have done, is unprecedented and my administration promised Kenyans that we shall do this and I'm glad the team has done it and I want to tell Kenyans today that I have been here myself throughout I have attended almost each and every training and I had seen the team evolve with the difficulties and challenges we have had by players needing to come in in time and having to make quick decisions to make sure it's done and we thank government for what they did for us but now it's been our turn to show government this is what we have been talking about. The CS has been here. She has seen this facility. She has seen the work we have done. And I think every Kenyan is enthusiastic now. But as opposed to before when we kept saying Federation doesn't do this, doesn't do that. Now the ball is in the players in the coaches' court. They have all the support they need, including the little most you can ask for to deliver a fantastic AFCON for us. I have a good feeling about this AFCON. Uh, next week, uh, we leave on Tuesday. We dock in Cairo on Tuesday. And for another four days, we prepare for the final leg of these finals in preparation to play Algeria on 23rd June at 10 p.m. in the night. And I, and I, and I want to tell Kenyans that we have done the best. Let us win uh, by doing the best. And even though we lost, let us lose knowing that we gave these kids and these boys all they deserve. We paid them, we kitted them, we fed them, we paid for their flights, we made sure they are comfortable. And, and, and whatever the coach wanted, which has never happened in Kenyan history, whatever he wanted, uh, we have delivered and I have been there personally to make sure that is done. It's important for Kenyans to know this because we have been, uh, there has been questions around administration of sport in Kenya. And I personally want to show that it can be done and it is being done. And we are sharing every day everything that we do to say that this has never been done before in any sport. We want Kenya to follow this example now of openness, of directness, of making sure that the athletes are taken care of in the right way and making sure that they come number one and making sure that whenever our coach says this is how I want to win, then we can question the coach by giving the coach what he needs. And by making sure that we're no longer discussing the mundane small things that have rocked Kenya. We are not there yet. Our budget is still too low. We do not have money for bonuses uh, that they're going to win. But you know, those are bonuses. Kenya will decide. Uh, the president will make a decision what to give the players when they win as that when they do. And I have told them, that they can win this cup. They can win this AFCON. 
And if they win this outcome, Kenya will turn around for them. Kenya, I, 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 I know if they win this, Kenyans will show up for them and do something big for their lives, to change their lives forever. And we have players who are doing this, all these players are doing this for the first time, as I am doing it for the first time. And I think uh, you can tell Kenyans to look forward to it. But whatever happens, we have exceeded our expectations. We want to come back to go to Chan in January in Cameroon. And we want to go back to AFCON again in 2021, so that we are no longer those that just appear once and disappear. We want to continue consistently preparing a team in the right way and hope that the results come our way. And that way then we can grow Kenyan football uh, and grow the players because if they win, then more clubs look into Kenya, more players play abroad. We, there are a bigger pool of players to compete at the highest level, which is what West Africa has done and we want to make sure that we can do better than them. So we agreed that there are two parts of monies. There is what we agreed to pay each player at every stage. $2,500 for being in the 27 squad. Four players were released, they got $2,500. Paid, finished. Then there is what they were to get as they head into Cairo, which was $5,000. These are allowances, fixed amounts that we agreed with the coach and the players. Then now there is, when they win a game, every nation in Africa, whenever a team wins a game, they reward the players. So we agreed a certain structure with them and said that's what they're going to get. But those are bonuses. We do not have that money. We have asked and explained to the ministry and the government and our sponsors that we don't have our money and we have explained the players that money will not be available immediately in Cairo but as we play in that tournament the more they win the higher the chances we have of paying them more. I can tell you if they go to the finals they will win themselves 1.2 million dollars, 120 million Kenya shillings if they got there. And if they get to the final, because we will be paid money by AFCON, we will not need any money from any other source. We shall pay them by what we have won. If we do not get there, then we'll need help from other sponsors. But I want to tell Kenyans that every little thing we agreed has been done for the first time in a major tournament. We did it for the girls in 2016. We have now done it for the boys. Football Kenya Federation President there, Nick Mwendo, speaking in Paris ahead of the, the DRC Congo tonight and also as the team prepares for the Africa Cup of Nations that will be played in Egypt later this month. The big question, Ronald, will be what are your expectations from Harambe Stars when they head on to Egypt? Well, I, I expect a good show. Definitely, because uh, they've had the best preparations I've ever seen, for, according for the national team. Yeah. I mean, a camp in France. I mean, uh, the bonus has, be, has been paid, just like uh, Zach said. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a new kit. Mm -hmm. The whole nation is behind <laughs> us. Yes. I mean, we have every reason to go there and give a performance of a lifetime. Yeah. And uh, to me, I expect nothing short of a good performance. Yeah. Even though maybe there have been talks of maybe we can get to the quarters and all that. But yeah. to, to me, that's still a huge fit. Yeah. We, sh we can just go there, take one match at a time, uh -huh. and maybe try and get the best result we can. Yeah. At most, maybe, let us try and get two draws. And then uh -huh. we, 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 we die with Tanzania. <laughs> <laughs> Tanzania is but also thinking like Tanzania that. is also thinking the same. <laughs> so, so I think those, those, that is the only team will get the three points. <laughs> yes. But for these other ones, we must be tactical enough uh -huh. in order to approach these two teams because, I mean, those are the giants of Africa. Yeah. Yeah. So, f people are talking about Tanzania. We've got Senegal, we've got Algeria. Yeah. But the question is, we have never gone uh, past the group stage. But this time around, 24 team tournament, 16 teams to the knockout stage. Do you see Arambe Stars making on to the knockout stages? Yeah, putting in order that uh, Sebastian Migne, uh, we are going to be maybe a surprise package in the group. Uh, strategies will work, will will work before us because uh, the first match we are playing Algeria, uh, yes. probably it's a hard match. It's a very competitive match. Uh, the next match will be. Uh, 
Senegal. Senegal. Yes. Then Senegal. the last match, Tanzania. Yes. So I think uh, if we pick two draws, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> like uh, like yes, I would die with Tanzania. Yeah. It will be better at least. So we we have to make sure that we don't lose the first match. Uh -huh. The second match we go for a for the. Now the Martin second one is Tanzania, then the third Se Senegal. Senegal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, the we have a blended squad uh, mixed with young and uh, experienced players. So actually, we are looking forward to get good results against uh, all those big teams. Yeah. Zach, yeah. for the old shop is now. What do you be expecting? Because it's a big one. Egypt have won it a record seven times. It is at their home. They have got the likes of Mo Salah in that team. Senegal is coming there with some of the best players, Koulibaly, Sadio Mane. What will be expecting from the showpiece itself in uh, football matters? For the entire showpiece, I think there are a lot of surprise packages. You can't, you see, for a team to make it to Afcon, <laughs> that means a good team. Yeah. But definitely in every tournament, they are favorites. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people are uh, rubbishing off Morocco. Mm -hmm. Morocco yes. has won, have Renard, who's won Afcon with. Like I think two teams. Two, That's two Zambia and Ivory Coast. Yes. This is someone that you people should not be taking lightly. Mm -hmm. uh, defensively, he has the players in attack. He has the players that he requires. He knows what African football entails. Yeah. I'll pick them as one of the favorites uh, with Egypt as the host nation. Yes. Uh, Senegal with their star started team uh, is another team to watch. Uh, though I don't think Cameroon will do that well yeah. because of their coach. I don't think Sidov understands African football and the yeah. players he has in store. Now mm -hmm. that even Abubakar didn't make the squad. Yes. So I think it's one team that might struggle. That's Cameroon with Ghana. Yeah. Might struggle. Those, those are the groups as they had, as we head on to the African. And Ronald, when you look at those groups, you're talking about Clarence Seedorf and Ghana that is not going to perform. My question was going to be, the traditional powerhouses of African football, do you give them a chance? Because the tra we've got Ivory Coast, we've got Ghana, we've got Nigeria. Egypt, Nigeria. Yeah. Once Nigeria always coming back, they were not there in the last edition. In, in, in fact, for Nigeria, they have a point to prove. Yeah. I mean, they are not in the last edition, and this edition, I think uh, we even saw Obi Mikel <laughs> yes. coming back from retirement. <laughs> so I think they, they mean business. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, I think, uh, in, in my own opinion, I think uh, uh, we will definitely see the major players going all the way up to the finals. I mean, yeah. the big boys, because mm -hmm. in the first, in the in the group stage, the, the knockout stages, I think uh, the boys will be sent home. And mm -hmm. I'm just hoping that Kenya won't be among the, <laughs> the boys being sent home early. Yeah. But uh, generally, I think uh, mm -hmm. we expect, I, I expect to see the big names, the Nigeria, Ghana, mm -hmm. Algeria, yes. Cameroon. I'm, I'm also giving Cameroon a chance. And uh, uh, we'll just wait to see. But do you think there's, there will be a shocker? Because we have got new teams coming on to the Africa Cup of Nations for the first time. Yeah. We've got Burundi, we've got Mauritius, Mauritius yeah. and Madagascar. And Those teams, may they not shock some teams here and there in the African <laughs> continent? Definitely, we expect a lot uh, from those newcomers. Uh, we've seen a surprise package uh, back in the tw 2015, was yeah, it 2015? Yeah, Zambia. Where, Camero, where Zambia, yeah, where Zambia uh, were crowned the champions of the Afcon, uh, uh, that edition. So. They, were, they had no one. They had uh, their captain, Christopher Katongo, who was initially playing for an, a, a club in Cyprus. So I think this time the big guns will not give in. The big guys, the big guns will not give any chance. Yeah, yeah will, let, will not let anyone again do wonders before them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But the European players also who are coming to play in the Africa Cup of the European based players, the likes of Mo Salah, Sadio Mane. Yeah. Mares is also there, Kulibal is also there. What kind of impact will they have in their teams? Uh, these are players will perform anyway, whether it's a tournament, it's a qualification process, you yeah. expect them to give a performance. When talking about people like Mo Salah, it's someone who's been giving performance the same way he's giving uh, at Liverpool. Yes. But again, you see this another AFCON that players see as a platform to market themselves. Yes. Someone like Mares hasn't been happy at Man City because of yeah. a lack of playing time. Yes. Yes. So he wants to show the entire world what he can do yeah. in this continent. Mm -hmm. And that again might work for these underdogs. These underdogs, not most of them are in the tournament to win it or something, yes. but the few players that see these as a platform 
to market themselves and uh, be ready for the markets. Yeah. I think that will favor teams like Kenya. You see the, the likes of Philip Monotino who might mm -hmm. want to leave and yeah. have a professional career. And guys who've been playing locally, this is the, this is the time they see that they have to perform yeah. to realize their dream of playing professionally. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I doubt if the likes of Mo Salah, the likes of Mane will replicate the same form they've been given in, uh, in, in, the, in the leagues because, yeah. I, I mean, African football is another different ball game altogether. It's yeah. so physical. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tend to see maybe some of our stars, maybe they don't shine when they come to, to, to play for their country because, I mean, it's so physical and most of these, maybe le let me say the Minos, the, the Mino teams, the players, they, you know, they always want to make a name with you. So I don't think they'll be finding it easy. They'll be finding it easy when yeah. they're playing against some of these teams. I hope they don't perform because if they don't perform, then yeah. we stand a chance here. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. only yeah. worry yeah. is <laughs> if they are perform, then we don't stand a chance. If yeah. they are to fail to perform, yes. if someone like manifests to perform when we are up against Senegal, yes. yeah. Then we are in the next round, definitely. Yeah, plus, you can remember what uh, Atsu did to Villa <laughs> <laughs> at the last yeah. match. Yeah, maybe, Robert, if I add something. Yes. Uh, you gentlemen don't write off Tanzania. Yeah. Because I've seen I've, a majority of their players, I know them. Yeah. I've met with them. I've, sometimes they were in the senior team when I was in the uh, Azam Under 20 Academy. Yes. So, you know, like the likes of Agri Morris, Erasto Nyoni in the back line. Mm -hmm. uh, we have John Boko in the front line. Mm -hmm. We have Mbwana yeah. Samata, yeah. who was the best player in the in the Belgian uh, Belgium league. Yes. Uh, you, we have uh, Thomas Ulimwangu, who plays straight in uh, Algeria. Yeah. So, I think these are blended squad that have vast experience yeah. with the uh, um, Emmanuel Monica I, I don't think if he's will the coach yeah, yeah yeah he's the coach yeah. so I don't think if they it will be a walk in the park well thanks a lot gentlemen for coming <laughs> here to the touchline Idi Shikanda who plays for Nairobi City Stars our sports journalist Zach Soguda is here and remember to buy his book away from victory you can go to Narok book club and you can get that book there for a thousand shillings and then we have got ronald okot also of the raw sports management i'm robert osoro and on behalf of everybody who managed to bring the touchline to you we say good afternoon <laughs>